Thank you, Mr. President. Four times, four times in my life, I have been lucky enough to hold in my arms a brand new person. And I remember each time that I've held those brand new little people in my arms being overwhelmed by the potential that they had. I remember looking at their fingers and their toes and looking into their eyes and wondering where their lives would take them. What would they use their hands to do? What would they create and who would they talk to? Would their hair always be that color? Were their eyes going to change color? Who were they going to be? And every single one of those four children that I looked at and loved immediately, even though they were all different, I heard myself saying exactly the same thing. She's perfect, or he's perfect. All four of these children were born absolutely perfect. And on that day that they were born, they knew nothing else but that they were perfect and that they were loved and that they were made exactly the way that they were supposed to be. I was reading uh, Marianne Williamson from The Course in Miracles, and she said, love is what we are born with. Fear is what we learn here. As we all start to grow, we have all kinds of fears that pop up in our minds. We might be scared of what's underneath the bed or what's hiding in the closet. We might be afraid of the dark or that our dad is going to go swimming out in the ocean and that tide is going to pull him away. And sometimes we start to have fears about who we are and if we're good enough, if we're special enough, if we are right for this world. We've all had those kinds of fears. But I want you to imagine for a minute what would happen is if when you're struggling with these fears about whether or not you are whole, whether or not you are perfect, whether or not all is as it should be within yourself, that you seek counseling. And when you seek that counselor, instead of affirming you, instead of affirming what an incredible human being you are, that licensed mental health professional affirms your deepest fears. What they do is they affirm to you that who you are is broken, that who you are is wrong, that who you are is sick, and that you are somehow broken or inadequate. And imagine how you would internalize that fear when this professional person whose job it is to make you feel better, to help you cope, to help you be strong, to go out into the world and contribute all the incredible things that our creator created you to do that you can't do unless you fundamentally change who you are. This is what conversion therapy, so-called conversion therapy, does. It seeks to change the fundamental nature of a person, of a human being, of a boy or a girl or a young woman or a young man. It is the unnatural act of suppressing the capacity to love, to express joy, and to seek genuine, authentic affirmation from the person of your choosing. Conversion therapy at its core, I believe, is an act of violence on a young person's sense of self, and it's an act of violence, I believe, on their soul. When we uh, heard this bill in committee, we heard some really powerful testimony from individuals who had gone through this process, this so-called conversion therapy. Uh, we heard from people that developed these fears and, and sought help. And we heard from a man named Paul Southwick. He said, when you are in conversion therapy, you are taught that you have a sickness, a pathology, and that you need a cure. And when the cure never comes, you are left even more anxious, hopeless, and ashamed than when you started. went through is a discredited practice. We know that it doesn't work. Uh, we know that it can harm people. And we know that the leading, every leading mental health professional organization opposes conversion therapy. These organizations representing more than 480,000 mental health professionals have all taken the position that there is nothing wrong with these young people being gay, lesbian, bisexual, or transgender is not a mental disorder, and thus it is not something that can or should be cured. 
The organizations uh, that have taken this position include the American Academy of Pediatrics, the American Counseling Association, the National Association of Social Workers, the American Psychiatric Association, the American Psychological Association, the American School Counselor Association, and the National Association of School Psychologists. The American Psychiatric Association said that they recommend that ethical practitioners refrain from attempts to change individual sexual orientation, keeping in mind the medical dictum to first do no harm. The potential risks of reparative therapy are great, including depression, anxiety, and self-destructive behavior. Since therapist alignment with societal prejudices against homosexuality may reinforce self-hatred already experienced by the patient. Professionals tell us not only does this not work, it hurts, it harms, it puts our kids at risk. House Bill 2307 is an important bill that in the words of the good representative from South and Southeast Portland tells our youth that there is nothing wrong with you. You are fine exactly the way that you are. If we pass this bill today, we will have a state policy that tells all kids that they are born perfect and that this has no place in our state. The bill would uh, prohibit the use of conversion therapy by a licensed mental health professional for a person under the age of 18. The bill is very carefully defined. Conversion therapy is defined as providing professional services for the purpose of attempting to change a person's sexual orientation or gender identity, including attempting to change behaviors or expressions of self or to reduce sexual or romantic attractions or feelings towards individuals of the same gender. In short, it means that a licensed mental health professional cannot engage in an effort to change who a person is. This does not mean that a person who is experiencing questions about their sexual identity, a person that uh, is, is trying to come to terms with questions that they have about themselves cannot seek mental health therapy. They can still go and they can see a counselor. That counselor just cannot impose their values and their desired outcome upon that person. This bill applies to licensed mental health professionals. It does not restrict the teachings of a church. It does not uh, change relig religious dictums. In fact, it's very narrowly crafted. This is about licensing a professional practice. There have been questions about whether or not this law would be constitutional. And we have some pretty clear signals that it is. Already, California, New Jersey, and Washington, D.C. have passed these laws, and twice now, the Supreme Court has uh, turned away the idea of trying to overturn these. So we do know, in fact, that this is constitutional. Colleagues, conversion therapy is discredited, it's dangerous, and it simply does not belong in Oregon. Our kids deserve much better than this. And this law will tell our LGBTQ youth that we know that they are born perfect. I hope you will join me in voting yes. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. President. Colleagues, thank you for the questions, the information that was put on the record, and the thoughtful debate. I wanted to return briefly to the issue of constitutionality. Uh, this law really has been tested in two circuit courts, and twice now the Supreme Court has declined to overturn those rulings. Um, it was telling to me, New Jersey is one of those other states, it's the words of Governor Chris Christie, when he signed a similar bill in 2013, he said, I believe that exposing children to these health risks without clear evidence of benefits that outweigh these serious risks is not appropriate. Colleagues, this is a risky, dangerous practice. We know this from the stories that we heard in committee, and I wanted to take a moment to thank those that had the courage to come and talk about a very difficult time in their lives, a very difficult experience. People told very difficult stories. I'd like to thank uh, the good representative, Representative Nose, for his work on this. Uh, Basic Rights Oregon and their allies have done just incredible work to get this narrowly crafted bill that works so well. I wanted to return to a minute for the comments that were made on the floor. Uh, I think. Many of you are familiar with one of my favorite psalms, Psalm 139.13. For you created my inmost being, 
you knit me together in my mother's womb. That goes to this idea that every single one of us is born perfect. We are created exactly the way that we are supposed to be. And I think even little kids know this. I was reading a collection of um, stories written by kids, and this was a third grader. The question was, what do you want to be? And a third grader in writing answered, I would like to be myself. I tried to be other things, but I always failed. Colleagues, let's end this practice. Let's not tell children they should be anything but exactly who they are. And today, I hope you will join me in voting yes and telling lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgendered, and queer youth all across the state that they are valued and they absolutely 100% were born perfect and we don't need them to change a thing. Thank you, Mr. President.